Welcome back into the Red Zone Podcast. My name is Colton Bartholomew. You know you football, but you're part of here for the Wisconsin State Journal. And right now I am solo, but soon I will be joined by Jake Kokorowski, the senior writer at BadgerBlitz.com. A special episode today for National Signing Day and recruiting in general for the Badgers here. Uh, Jim is out in Ohio covering the Badger volleyball team in the Final Four, so make sure you check out Madison.com for all that coverage. Uh, lots of good stuff coming from him and Dennis Punzel on the Badger volleyball team chasing down a national championship. Third straight year for the uh, Final Four, I believe, for the volleyball team as well. Um, obviously a busy week here for Badger football with recruiting and National Signing Day, and we've also been able to talk to uh, some players from the current roster as well who are starting to get into their bowl prep practices. But a lot of great stuff on Madison.com. Before we talk to Jake, just want to kind of alert you to some of the things that are on Madison.com you can check out and read. Um, I wrote a story about, you know, the, the number of players that usually would end up in a Wisconsin uniform in the recruiting cycle that didn't this year. Um, some things, some factors that went into that include, you know, the number of guys that are going to be coming back with their extra year of eligibility, the just limited number of scholarships that they had after a couple of big recruiting classes. This is kind of a correction year when you look at the numbers overall, but obviously the Badgers still have some guys to be excited about. And that's what Jake and I talked quite a bit about some, names and faces and uh, kind of guys you should keep in the back of your head because they might not be instant impact guys right away and be on the field as freshmen as much as we've seen in the last couple of years maybe but I still think there's going to be some really good eventual players um, in this class when you look at athleticism versatility uh, everything like that so uh, make sure you're masson.com checking out our uh, our collection of breaking down every recruit that's come into the class uh, with comments from their position coach and kind of what they see for them and what attracted them uh, to the coaches as recruits. So uh, lots of good stuff in there. It's on Madison.com as well. I wrote about Tommy McIntosh, who is one of their wide receiver recruits, a 6'5 kid out of Michigan, who is going to very clearly be a different frame, a different body at the wide receiver position than the Badgers have had uh, recently. And this is all kind of part of a mold that Alvis Witted, the receivers coach, is trying to find for that receiver position, a guy, Marcus Allen, from last year's class, who is starting to blow up a little bit here in the um, bowl prep practices. He's also in that same mold, bigger, more physical receivers that uh, the Badgers are trying to get into, into the roster, onto the team, um, to challenge defenses in ways that they haven't in the past. So interesting read there, some comments from Witted and from McIntosh about what they've talked to him about uh, in the recruiting process and everything that's been going along. So lots of great stuff in Madison.com, and that's not all of it. There's a bunch more. So make sure you're checking all that out and getting subscribed. And um, obviously, Abby is covering basketball up, down, and sideways, so all types of stuff from the men's basketball program. And then Todd Molesky, obviously our hockey reporter, covering men's and women's hockey. Um, Lots of heat on Tony Granato, as you if you've been following Jim's columns uh, and uh, and Todd's writing, but uh, we will see if they can get that turned around by the end of this season for the Badger men's program. And then obviously women are continuing to be very very good. So lots of good stuff to read on Masson.com, and I will not wait too any more any longer here. And uh, we'll take a quick break, and then it'll be me and Jake Kokorowski from Badger Blitz. All right, and as promised, we have Jake Kokorowski, the senior writer at BadgerBlitz.com, part of the Rivals Network, a recruiting expert, and a guy that's been all over this stuff. Make sure you check out Badger Blitz. They have a ton of coverage from all the, the signing day news and a ton of video. Jake is always grabbing video and, and recording our interviews and everything we do around Wisconsin. So a lot of great stuff. Jake, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks, man. No, I appreciate you having me on. And gosh, you and I have seen so much of each other in the past 48 hours. I think a it's lot. Been- yeah, basically. I mean, we're recording this Thursday afternoon and we've probably been around. I've been around you more than I have my wife since Tuesday. So <laughs> She's not happy about it, but we'll make it work. We got the no, weekend. We got- yeah, we got no. I mean, yeah, we'll be seeing Spider Man anyways, but whatever, you know. But yeah, exactly. no, but no, it's been a busy, busy week for you and I. Player availability, coach availability going to uh, Cottage Grove for a signing ceremony. Uh, It's just a day in the life of Wisconsin beat writers and early signing period all rolling into one. 
Absolutely. So obviously a big week for, for you and your site. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of recruiting, I think, unfortunately, in today's day and age kind of boils down to rankings, everybody on the rankings watch and what everybody's kind of going for. Everybody wants those top 10, 15, you know, 20 classes. And, you know, Wisconsin had been in that range the last few years. And you look at it this year, they're in the mid forties on most of these sites. And uh, I guess I didn't check today after the ham news, but uh, I believe that's right around where they're at in the, in the mid forties. And when you look at just the, the ranking by itself, they're near the bottom of the big 10, but you know, the math and the things that go into these rankings and how everything works, just give me an overall evaluation of Wisconsin's class. And is the ranking true to what you think this class is, or kind of give me your, your take on that. Yeah. You know, I was, I was looking through this beforehand and you're right. They came in 46. Uh, as of today, as we are recording, which is uh, Thursday afternoon, which is, I can't believe it's Thursday afternoon right now, uh, after the week that we've had, uh, you know, and, and that's with 14 total commits. And y- you look at just, you know, I'm even looking within Wisconsin right now, you know, in the Big Ten, and you look at the points or whatnot. Yeah, you know, they may be right now 12th in, in the Big Ten uh, on rivals right now, but you look at a lot of the commit numbers I, I you know and we try to preface it too and yeah you know wisconsin missed out on billy billy shrouth uh from saint mary springs and that you know that, that that's a significant loss for wisconsin in terms of an in-state player you want to keep those walls up you want to maintain the o-line you and the essentially what you've seen over the past three years where you know, logan brown joe titman highly re- regarded lyman jack nelson trey wedig uh, that's just talking about like highly ranked players, but guys is within the state too, where Nelson Wedig and then you know JP Benchwall uh, and whatnot, even out of state that last year, a five-star and Renolan Rucci and, and Riley Malman, a four-star. Uh, and you have Joe Brunner, who I think is going to be fantastic. I'm sure we'll talk about him in a little bit. I think he's going to be a fantastic player with his physicality and viciousness on the field, playing to the whistle. Uh, and Joe Rudolph and Miles Burkett both had uh, word, nice words to say about Brunner there, but it is, uh, you know, with going back to the rankings, you know, it's also, it's tough because, you know, you look at, I'm looking at the rankings right now and you see Wisconsin right now has the like second least amount of signees right now or commits, you know, there's four, they have 14 right now. The Nebraska has the fewest with 13, according to rivals, Northwestern has 15. Then Iowa has 17. So I think that plays a role where, you know, obviously Ohio State's going to recruit. They have 18 recruits right now. Penn State, though, has 24. Michigan, 23. Uh, Michigan State, 22. Indiana, 20. Uh, you know, and for that matter, you know, and Rutgers and, um, you know, Maryland, 18 and 20, respectively. Purdue's got 21. So I'm just throwing out those numbers in terms of recruits at the moment. And that that can obviously change things. Uh, you know, the average star rating for Wisconsin, I was looking at it, and I believe it's 3.07. Uh, in terms of average star rankings, but you know, I think this class, there are some players that, you know, with the pandemic and them not getting their film out to me, you know, someone like an Aiden Vaughn who just blew up in the fall is right. huge in my eyes. That That's a player that, you know, he, he saw the power five offers blow up in the fall. He decommits from air force, which he, I think he was committed, he committed in August but so he secured a spot there, but then he starts seeing his senior film blow up. Bob Bostad mentioned about how he had a, you know, a one-on-one workout in the, you know, <laughs> was it this summer? And then they just wanted to see some film and then uh, it went from there. Um, but really it is a, you have players like him and, and others where I, I think this class is going to be special in terms of who they put out. And I think there, there's some players that will exceed their star rankings and be key contributors. They're going to have to be key contributors, but um, you know, it is obviously you want to get the best of the best for in terms of recruits and, and they did miss out. They didn't get, you know, in this early setting period, a running back, you know, they missed out on Nicholas Singleton who went to Penn state, one of the best players uh, in in the class, you know, Jaden Ott stayed with Cal and they had him for an official visit in October for the army game. So there were misses, obviously that Mm -hmm. being said, this class, I still think, you know, there's always going to be small numbers due to the scholarship numbers. And we don't know how the math's going to work out with the COVID-19 pandemic and the, the blanket eligibility and just who comes back, who doesn't, and just right. what space they have. But uh, it is something where, you know, it, size in the class does matter for rankings. And I think, you know, Wisconsin still got some really good players. Yeah. And I think that's something to, 
that's important to say is like, you know, because as I mentioned at the top, like people like to look at the, the class rankings and base all their opinions off that. And you, I think one, a good one is like average, you mentioned the average star ranking, it's above a three, which is just solid. And then if you look at just individual recruits, the average ranking is right about where they've been recruiting. So a lot of people I think were worried about a fall off, especially with all the news about the recruiting staff and everything else has been coming out lately. But I think that there's a, a solid base here. And you mentioned a couple of guys, Aiden Vaughn, the linebacker out of Michigan, um, Joe Brunner, obviously from over in Whitefish Bay. He's, they're both guys that they're very, very high on. But I wanted to ask you, and we'll kind of tr go back and forth here uh, on a couple of superlatives, I guess you could say for this class. Who would you say is your most intriguing prospect when you look at this class that Wisconsin's bringing in this year? Who's kind of got your eye that you really want to see when they get to fall camp or maybe even spring ball for some of these early enrollees? You know, and it's going to be interesting too with that. I, I, I kind of, I said Aiden Vaughn and I'm kind of intrigued by him because, you know, he jumped up to a, a high three-star ranking, a 5.7 rating according to rivals and, you know, a six foot three frame uh, can play, you know, he's right now penciled in as an inside linebacker. I, I think there's some intriguing athleticism from him. I, I think that just the way he played this fall stands out and just, you know, Wisconsin with, they have like high potential type players, you know, they take advantage of those athletic players and they can mold them. And you have someone like Bob Bostad, who you've seen what he's done with death row, if you will, which is the, for those that don't know the nickname for the inside linebacker group. And Bob did confirm that with me. Uh, that is, that is still the case that the, the players are still running through that at the moment, but you know, you have a player, like, you know, a coach like that, that's put players into the league, not just on the offensive line, but on inside linebackers too, you know, Brian Conley, TJ Edwards, Chris Orr had his cup of tea recently too. And then Jack Sanborn and when, I, you know, if, in you know, if Leo Chanel declares, you know, now, or if he waits for his eligibility, you know, those two, you know, they should be playing on Sundays in some fashion, but uh, I think just having that ability to mold, it really is, I think going to be, I think he has a really good shot at, at making something happen. And I'm bringing up a quote real quick on this Colton too, from, cause that, that was a question that uh, was brought up in terms of a, a sleeper for our website on badgerblitz.com. We did a round, round table with Benjamin Wargle and also John McNamara. And I'm saying, let's see, like uh, his head coach from Wald Lake uh, said, you know, he's got a full two box when it comes to being a football player. Um, you know, he's a very physical football player pure athleticism, strength, physicality. He's only played linebacker for a year. So he's just continuing to be a student of the position will be big, et cetera, et cetera. That's stuff that you hear. And Wisconsin does such a good job using them. And you have not just Bostad, but defensive coordinator, Jim Leonard, they know how to utilize players to their strengths. It's a, it's a great staff for developing players. And it's not like, you know, he's a, you know, a, a, you know I would say a lesser ranked player player you know he's up a 5.7 rank you know rating he's one step away from being a four-star kid so I think Vaughn with his ascent and just what he did during his senior year I think he he could stand out I think uh Avion Jones too a player that both Jim Leonard and, and Hank Poteet talked about his versatility and someone that can play I think you know and I know the coaching staff had said about this too I'm, I'm working on an article about the what defensive coaches said about the prospects I was looking at it and you know he was saying uh, gosh, uh, you know, Jim Leonard says the one that that was one of the things that stood out is we saw him as a guy that who really could play anything in our secondary. And so I think that's going to be standing out there where you've seen what Wisconsin can do with an Atrell Jamerson, uh, you know, even I would say Max Lofi, who was, you know, from what we saw in fall camp was playing in the slot. It'll be, you know, I, they know how to maximize players there. And you have a player like that that can patrol the secondary at any possession. Uh, that's a very valuable, valuable piece. Yeah. And it's interesting because I think you're starting to see, I think Wisconsin's doing a really good job of saying, like not being afraid of those guys that don't have a perfect apples to apples position fit. Like you mentioned Aiden Vaughn, who well, I'm with you. I think that's a great pick in terms of an intriguing prospect because he hasn't been playing the linebacker for a year and he's been playing safety. He's been playing on the offensive side of the ball. He returns kicks for his high school. Like this guy has all these physical tools and you watch his tape. He's covering, you know, sideline to sideline as a linebacker. He's getting downhill. He's, he loves hitting people. You can tell. Um, and it seems like Wisconsin is, is embracing that. Like, Hey, we will figure out where you fit in with us eventually. Like just come be a good athlete for us and we'll kind of find your spot. And 
I think that some coaches, some programs might say, hey, if I don't know where I'm going to play you right away and how I'm going to fit you in day one, I don't want to you know, give you a scholarship because I have, might have another person that I know where he goes. But I, I think you're right that Wisconsin really values that versatility. And in that same vein, that's my most intriguing prospect of this class would be Cade uh, Yacassin. Yeah, I knew I was going to screw it up. Cade Yacassin. Yep. Yacassin from out in Pennsylvania, <laughs> who he, he's starting to say, it's starting to sound like more and more that he's going to be the running back in the class. He's coming in as an athlete, and they list him as an athlete at Wisconsin. Uh, but played running back for his high school, but also played slot receiver, also played defensive back. A guy that came to camp in every position coach they worked out for wanted him at his mm-hmm. position. They're all like, yeah, I would take him, get, give him a scholarship. He gets pulled up into Chris's office after the, the first camp gets offered, comes back, what, two weeks later and does another camp and decides to commit. So it's a cool story in that sense. But I also think that just that type of kid, that all over just good football player, that they will figure out where they want to put you on the field and then develop you. That seems to be an overall kind of trend in their recruiting. They will go after the versatile guy that maybe – is getting overlooked a little bit because other coaches are scared of that process of figuring out where he plays. Yeah. I mean, Yacomelli, he's also a state champ like Burkett, like Tristan Monday too. I mean, you, you know, one thing with this class is that, you know, I think a couple of people pointed it out that there's a winning pedigree within this class that, you know, Bur- again, Burkett won the WIA division one state championship just a couple of weeks ago. I, you know, Isaac Ham, who, obviously was the state runner up uh, Tommy mm-hmm. McIntosh made it the wide receiver from DeWitt, Michigan, uh, you know, Brunner. Aaron Jones. Yeah. Brunner, Joe Brunner made in playoffs. Like these are, you know, Katie Yacomelli, you know, not just one, I think the class, you know, the class five, a, he won like two types of championships there uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. So I, I'm still confused by how many high school, you know, associations. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's a Pittsburgh area league. Yeah. And then there's the state league too. Yeah. So it's right. a, little, a little different than out, but uh, here he, and there, but but he did everything for, for Penn Trafford. Yacomelli mm-hmm. did. And, you know, he was a running back. He had a 92 yard, a couple of newspapers reported it, a 92 yard reception for a touchdown uh, in a playoff game. And you know, he plays defense, uh, you know, and there's a chance, you know, I know there's a possibility maybe for safety, even though it sounds more off on the offensive side of the ball, but you have a player like that. I mean, in Paul, Chris re- referenced it yesterday during his press conference. Well, we didn't know about a particular player, and he hinted towards Braylon Allen. Yeah, and that worked out. Didn't know. Yeah, that worked out. And I'm not saying Yakamel. It's, it's hard. You don't want to put obviously pressure or anything on Yakameli, but you know you have a player that is just a very good player. His athleticism shines. They're gonna find a home, and they'll mm-hmm. utilize him. So I mean, that's a great pick too. And uh, it, you know, for me, you know, he was one of my, let's see, we had this on our, uh, site, you know, I, I had him for one of my, you know, superlatives as well. And it's honestly, it's going to be very interesting to see, uh, just how he develops and where they see him. I mean, that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. Again, uh, you have those type of players. I think that's one of my fun things is like, where are they going to play? And mm-hmm. just, you know, and how are they going to utilize them? We're all wondering about Braylon Allen, what he do in the running back room and look at him, you know, four games into the season, uh, making an impact and going from there. We'll see what Yacomelli does once he gets here in the summer. Yeah. And I think knowing that you've got Braylon Allen for at least two more years as your number one running back, more than likely, you know, barring injuries or other things like that. Uh, having a guy like Yacomelli that can play other places, you can get him on the field still, even if he's not in your backfield. And I think when you look at the, the Badgers overall, I mean, everybody talks about like this offense needs to just find more explosiveness, right? And I think Yacomelli could be one of those guys that he, if he's he's your backup running back or he's your number three running back, whatever it ends up being, but he's also playing slot receiver for you some on some off downs. It can just add those athletes onto the field and just challenge defenses in that way. Um, kind of sticking with this superlatives angle, Jake, I wanted to ask you, as you look at the current Badgers roster and the guys that are coming in, who do you think's got the quickest path to the field? Like I I've been writing this week and I wonder if you agree, just, I don't think that there's a Braylon Allen. I don't think there's somebody that's going to come in and become one of the most important players on the team as soon as next season. But I think that these guys are going to be pretty quick in that second year of becoming pretty big pieces. So who do you think's got the quickest path given what the Badgers have already? Right. You know, it, to be honest, when we're talking about Yacomelli, he's my pick for it. And it's not okay. really, um, it, 
It was in the superlative for, for BadgerBlitz.com's roundtable, the most likely to play early. I put in Yakamele because I don't know in terms of if we'll see him on offense or defense, depending upon where they need him, but special teams. Uh, you've seen what sure. it did for Hunter Waller. You know, Jake Cheney, uh, you know, I didn't check pro football focus to see if he got received a defensive snap, but, you know, he burned a red shirt playing over four games this season. And Correct. that's only yep. going to help him where, you know, where he'll be able to, you know, he's picked up the speed of the game and whatnot. If you have an athlete like that, that can go out and make a, an impact and adjust to the game through special teams, you know, and I know Jim Leonard talked about that, talking about Hunter Wohler, where that special teams is that gateway to playing on either side of the ball. And I think Yacomelli has that opportunity. I think he will just because everything that we've seen out of him and just, you know, you talked to all the assistant coaches about Yacomelli. I mean, we talked to Jim Leonard about him. We talked about to Alvis Witted about him. We talked to, we didn't get the chance to talk to Gary Brown about him, but uh, you know, Paul Chris mentioned, you know, so, you know, you have multiple perspectives here. And I just think that he has a chance that, you know, depending on you know, if that talent's shining through, you know, and if he can you know, showcase that athleticism early, I think special teams would be there. Uh, and whether or not what happens with offense and in the running back room or wherever he's lined up, we'll see. But uh, he would be my case, but I agree with you too, where I'm not, you know, I, I said it in, even in the round table that I'm not sure who would do it. It's just based on the depth of, of who's there and uh, making an immediate impact. It, it's going to be interesting to see if who breaks through, if, if someone can be a, a Waller, a, a Braylon Allen. I don't think anyone, like you said, it will be a Braylon Allen or just the Jake Cheney too, where just they're going to get that experience that first year on those, you know, that third phase of the game. And we'll see what happens after that. You know, I'm with you. And I think originally when I, when I started looking at this class, I would, I would say it was probably in the summertime after he committed, I thought Curtis Neal was going to be that guy, the defensive lineman that they're bringing in more than pretty much confirmed yesterday that he's going to be a defensive tackle, the nose guard type yep. of player. Um, I'm concerned with, especially him being a bigger guy and a young guy like that. It's tougher, I think, to expect him to fully recover from his injuries, knee injury that he suffered in high school. Uh, you had a really good interview. Make sure you check it out on Bad, uh, Badger Blitz's YouTube page. A good interview with him talking about his recovery. But I think it'd be tough to expect him to recover from that, come into fall camp, and then compete for a job, especially if a guy like Keanu Benton's still here in front of him. But I think you, when you know you're going to lose guys like Bryson Williams behind Keanu Benton, I think there is going to be a void for that second nose guard type of position. And that that spot actually played some decent, a decent number of snaps defensively because, you know, you got to get Keanu Benton some rest here and there. And then at least in my estimation, it seemed like Ross Kalaji and Jim Leonard wanted to rotate their defensive line, especially later on in the season. So I think there's some opportunities there if he can come in healthy. Uh, so if I had to pick a guy that's got the clearest path, at least it would be him. It's just all going to depend on how quickly he recovers from that injury. Right. And with Neil too, I mean, you know, he's working his way back. I think he, he told us he suffered the injury in April, uh, if I'm not mistaken and, and whatnot. And, you know, if you guys go to the Badger Blitz um, YouTube page, it, we laid it out and we, we talk also about his viral tweet back from March, 2020, which uh, the top five foods, I asked Ross about that uh, Kalaji and he laughed about it yesterday too. Uh, but it is uh, with, with Neil too, I think it's something where even with Gio Piaz, uh, the uh, you know, who, played at the same high school as Neil uh, yeah, right. <laughs> for that matter. So a former, you know, teammate in that high school, you know, obviously Devin Chandler came, went to that high school, but now he's at Virginia. So there has been a little bit of a pipeline with that school in the recent memory too. But, you know, Neil, I think, you know, there's the physicality, a tenacity too, which you want out of a defensive lineman. If you can get healthy, you know, he's, he's arriving early, I think Neil, uh, you mentioned, I think he's got a great shot depending, especially if they do, you know, depending on what happens with Pias, who I thought looked pretty good during the spring. We didn't, I didn't really necessarily see him too much in, in fall camp as per se, when we have Bryson and, and Keanu there, but you know, it will be interesting to see what Pias can do, but then uh, yeah, Neil, I think is going to be a fantastic prospect, you know, staying, if he stays healthy and the rehab goes well, uh, he could be another one of those, you know, impact players on the defensive line with you've seen that new philosophy from Ross Kalaji where they're able to penetrate a little bit more, not just clog the gaps uh, to allow that linebackers make the plays. I, I think he could be another line of that, that, you know, with Benton and, and others. Yeah. I, when I saw that Neil was going to be one of the um, early enrollees, I was like, that is probably the best decision you can make health wise, just because and I'm not, you know, dogging whoever is his trainers, doctors were at home. It's just, it's a different level when you have instant access to them 
at school, at where you're living here in Madison. And then they obviously have a vested interest in you getting healthy quickly and being able to participate. Oh, yeah. So I think it's oh, a yeah. big help for him. Um, you mentioned a little bit earlier, you and I were both at the signing ceremony out in Cottage Grove for Isaac Ham, the Sun Prairie defensive end, uh, four-star defensive lineman who uh, committed later in the day. He was, he was that guy that we all were talking around, I felt like, when we were talking to the assistant coaches, like, hey, there's a couple other guys that are still out there. And uh, Paul Chris said, you know, when I went back later on in the day and listened to it again, he said, hey, I know we're not done in terms of how many guys we're signing. So I don't know if he was talking about other people along with Ham or just Ham, but obviously a big pickup for them, a local kid, four-star that uh, is staying closer to home. And I wanted to get your perspective on, because you saw him play more in high school than I did. I saw one game and I watched quite a bit of the state championship game on TV. Um, what, what do you think he brings? Because it's a unique body type for the, the, the defensive line for Wisconsin. He's not as big as what we're seeing from their defensive ends. I don't think he's quite the same as what they have at outside linebacker. And he kind of said when we were talking to him, he, he's been told more of a hybrid role, like a wide nine defensive end, but that's something that we really haven't seen out of Wisconsin's defense. I mean, that's what really stood out to me too, where this is someone like, remember when, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to compare, but remember when Jim Leonard talked about TJ, you know, bowlers, you know, last year, he kind of called him an outside linebacker kind of plus. Right. And, yep. You know, and that, that's what, I mean, it stands out to me. So I'm just wondering like, you know, with the skill sets and we didn't really see, we didn't see bowlers really on the field uh, much this year, but I'm intrigued by that as well. And I, I think with ham too, we talked to his coach, Brian Kaminsky yesterday uh, last night after the ceremony and, you know, he just, I mean, he thinks it's a great spot for, for ham and what he can do. And it, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm just looking through the, the what he said and uh, just what he feels he can bring. Like here he feels he's an elite pass rusher already. So, and he's quick as off the ball as, as Kaminsky has seen. Uh, there's a relentless effort in chasing down plays. I mean, he, he talked about being able to read a screen on the outside and going from an interior position on the defensive line for some prairie and, and chasing the guy out to make a play on the outside. So, uh, so there's a motor there. I heard that word. Uh, and, and, you know, it, I think it's going to be really interesting just to see, uh, you know, and Kaminsky said, you know, just that amount of growth he's had within a year and a half of playing defensive line, you know, he's really good right now, but his ceiling, he's still got so much more potential in him. In him. And that stands out uh, where just what, how will his body fill out? Will, he get up to a larger frame. He says about six, five two forty. I think is what Wisconsin labeled him as during the, you know, for on the early signing period website. So we'll see uh, in terms of what he can do, but yeah, it seems like more of a, a hybrid type role where he's going to be on the edge and just go get the passer or go stuff the run. Uh, and we'll see how just Jim Leonard and Ross Kalaji roll through uh, with, with how they utilize and how his body develops too. And, uh, it, yeah, it is different because normally if you're going to be an outside linebacker, you can't just go and rush the passer, right? In this defense, you have to go back. You've, you've written about it in your articles about breaking, you know, talking about getting back enough in space for like Noah Burks and for Nick Herbig, uh, which is one of your your insights back, uh, I think it was the Notre Dame, Notre Dame game, I'm not mistaken, yep. when you had that, that when you rewatched it. So, it, you know, it, if he's just going to be going after the passer, that's, that's intriguing to me. Uh, and, and like, how is that going to, you know, how does that change the defense at all? If it does, um, et cetera, it, it to me, uh, he's an intriguing prospect and just how he develops, especially after getting surgery, you know, he's talking about, he talked about, to us about that procedure on his left shoulder, which appears to be upcoming uh, and mm -hmm. just working his way back and, and getting back up. Cause he said about 240, 245, but he's gotten, he said he was up to near 300 at one point during his high school career, which um, you know, and where he was, but, uh, well, again, we'll, Jake, we'll, Jake and I are on Zoom together right now, and we both just made faces like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he was carrying 300 pounds." I'm just, you know, I don't know if that was entirely accurate, but, but you know, I mean, but you know, he was heavier though, so it is really sure. going to be interesting to see what he, you know, what he does, and you know, again, I'm, I'm intrigued just because he's a talent that you mentioned he's a hybrid type player, and just how, how does his body develop, and then Jim Leonard again knows how to utilize players to the best of their strengths so if we see that elite edge rushing type ability that Kaminsky des described well you know how is Jim going to utilize that and just how quick could he make an impact so uh again that's gonna be one of the fun storylines that we'll see when he you know he's going to be entering in summer of 2022 so he's not going to be a mid-year enrollee 
uh, again, it's going to be a fun storyline to watch some of these players and just the ones that have this potential, how are they going to be maximize it? And just the other question is just, when is it going to be, when are they going to shine or when is that going to come to fruition where they'll have to make an impact? Yeah. We're, we keep talking about all the versatility that they, they're compiling and you mentioned TJ bowlers that, that hybrid style. And then I think Jake Ratzlaff, uh, when Jim Leonard was talking about him last year, a four-star guy from last season, he said inside or outside linebacker. I don't know, like kind of a yes, what linebacker position, wherever we kind of figure it out. I mean, eventually if you keep, they keep adding guys like this, I think Aiden Vaughn might kind of fall into that category with this class too, coming in as an inside guy, but maybe you could play both. Like you're talking about a whole front seven full of guys that are, could move around. You might just see some crazy stuff because you know how creative Jim Leonard can be and can do some different things. I think that's, it's really exciting time. Um, so long as Jim Leonard stays, however long that ends up being, this, <laughs> we continue to have all this talent for him to use on that defense as, as they continue to recruit well on that side of the ball. Um, and Jake, I just had one more topic I wanted to cover with you because you did a really good job uh, on the Badger Blitz YouTube page uh, talking with Carson Hinsman. He's now basically the, the big fish left here in Wisconsin and uh, very clearly Wisconsin would like to make him part of their class and as would Ohio State. Uh, he was one of the only kind of biggest names here in the state. And I honestly, I think the Midwest, when it kind of started looking at some of these pages, one of the bigger names in the Midwest in the country that didn't sign yet here in the early signing period, we still have, you know, 36 hours to go. He still has a chance here, but give me some of the things that really stuck out to you from that conversation. And I want people to go check that out make sure you give Jake his clicks that he deserves for that, <laughs> that really good interview on YouTube. Uh, but give me some of the highlights that kind of stuck out to you about chatting with Hinsman. Yeah. The one thing I didn't put it on, we didn't put it on YouTube. I did just a regular interview with them, but it's on oh, the, you know, the article is on our, our badgerblitz.com page. And, you know, it is uh, really, to me, it took away is this, you know, I had asked him right at the end, you know, this timelines and if he knows potential timelines for a decision, he said, it wasn't sure. I mean, I'll read it verbatim from, from the article, the sooner I can get it done, the better, honestly, it could be this week. We'll see. I'm not really sure myself. I just got to pull the trigger on something pretty soon. I guess we'll see. I don't even know myself. I can't even tell you yes or no to anything really about that. So I guess we'll see that, that's that, you know, in terms of decision-making. And uh, so, that, you know, that, that sounds was, like a high schooler. Yeah, it really, you know, and it's something like, I mean, I, you know, this is on Sunday evening too. So I talked to him. Uh, it's been a busy, you know, few days, weeks. So I had to relook like, okay, when did he say this? Um, but it was a, you know, for me, uh, things that stood out, you know, he did say he feels like he's narrowed it down to Ohio State and Wisconsin. He did mention he had some respect for Minnesota. He had, re not some, but he had respect for Minnesota too. Cause I'd asked him, you know, in terms of schools that, may have tried to sniff around to see, you know, if he was still interested, you know, besides those two. And he mentioned, you know, Ohio state, Wisconsin, but he said he had respect for Minnesota, but it looks like it's, you know, he'd say, I'd say Ohio state, Wisconsin right now, when he said narrowing it down again, but I kind of focused in on just talking about the schools and, uh, you know, he talked about you know, the, you know, the Buckeyes playing some of the highest competition in football and, you know, the, you know, how they play and just, you know, he mentioned not being able to play for, you know, uh, getting a chance to get a state championship at high school and he'd love to wear, win a championship somewhere uh, and whatnot. Talking about, you know, he said they really have kind of have that championship culture. And I think that really speaks volumes. He talked about uh, the strength and conditioning staff and just uh, the guys that they produce. Um, but then he goes to Wisconsin and he talked about really the, the relationship with Joe Rudolph uh, and, and saying, you know, Wisconsin's the home state and state pride's a lot of pride. Uh, you know, he, he loves the traditions at Wisconsin, has a lot of great guys down there and their old line culture too for, for the Badgers and putting the guys into the NFL. And I mean, this is what he said too, which, you know, stuck out to me, which you talk about Joe Rudolph being a, a, a great recruiter from this class. And, you know, he established a relationship with Nolan Rucci early on for, for last year's class, right? The five-star right. tackle. Uh, you know, he, this is Hinsman saying, I, and I really, really, really love Coach Rudolph. I think he's one of the best coaches I've ever talked to. He's really, really good at what he does. And he's really good at connecting with the player. Uh, and I think I, he says, I feel like that's what really influenced my recruitment to kind of be like, really be that so far with Wisconsin is him and his approach to things. Um, and so, you know, he talked about that, but I also, another thing, I mean, and both programs came to visit him a couple of times, you know, in the past couple of weeks leading up to the early signing period, I asked him what type of conversations 
And that, that's what kind of stuck out to me. It's like, well, what are you guys talking? Is it, is it football? Is it life? Is it obviously it's going to be a combination, right? But, you know, he talked about two different approaches where Wisconsin takes kind of a sentimental, it'd be great to have you here approach. Uh, you know, it, he feels like coach Rudolph resonates with him so well because you don't want to call him a father figure, but you know, he, he said, quote, he's a really, really great guy. He understands Wisconsin culture. What it takes for them to be great. I mentioned blue collar work ethic. Uh, and then like, you know, with Ohio state, you know, like he said, when you're done talking to them, you're like, man, I want to put on some pads right on right now, you know, and they have a drive of, let's go get after it. Uh, and they're honest with them too. Uh, when it comes to, you know, they said they'll be completely honest with you. Sometimes they're brutally honest, which I think is pretty good. So those were two contrasting styles that I was like, okay, this is, you know, it, it's interesting just to see, not to see, it's not necessarily how the sausage is made because you, you're not seeing this, the entire process of, of the text messages or whatnot, but you're also seeing just insight that we wouldn't see like, okay, well, how are they approaching this? And we know how, you know, mostly Wisconsin talks about the right fit in, in kind of a family atmosphere, et cetera. Sure. And that's how you know, Wisconsin's always worked. And you hear that from recruits and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, so, and you, you know, you get the yeah. sense Wisconsin's kind of, it's pretty straightforward with recruits. They're like, Hey man, we obviously want you. What do you want from us? What can we give you? Like they kind of have a very no frills approach to it. Just from the conversations I've had and really what the coaches talk about themselves, like, Hey, we're going to get you around our guys. And if you like it, you're probably going to love it and you're probably going to right. come here. And if you don't, it's probably not going to work out anyway. And we kind of can move on. Right. And that's where, so, I mean, I mean Wisconsin's had that approach with, especially with Paul Christ as the head coach, you know, and it's also, you know, very much, you know, to me, it feels like there's, there's not a lot of pressure, you know, like, I, I guess with like the, the, the recruiting, you know, floss is, it feels like that where they, you know, they, they, every offer that Wisconsin puts out is, you know, very much an offer to say, you know, we want you at this school. Like, right. It's and, real. And, and I think Paul Chris said that at our, our press conference on Wednesday, like it was about, he's talking about Curtis Neal and then um, Corey lied to their yeah. prospects that got hurt and didn't get to play this year. And Chris was asked about not recruiting over them or not pulling their scholarships because of those injuries. And he said, no, like this is a two-way commitment. Like we're not going to do that. We don't play games like that. When we give you an offer, it's real. And I mean, not that Paul Chris is like want to just throw out kind of trademark phrases or like really things that like you should put on a banner. But to me, if I'm Paul Chris, like that's my, my recruiting, like subhead, like, yes, I want to. And this is real, by the way, like I don't give out 400 scholarship offers a class. Right. Like well, Absolutely. They, 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 not that we're here to pass judgment, but like that to me is the right way to go about it. And the more honest way to go about it in the, kind of dishonest world of recruiting and the, they can get a little messy. I think Wisconsin, at least on the surface that we know about, does a pretty good job of being straightforward with these kids. Right. And to me, it's always interesting, right. Where you're talking with, in terms of recruiting, where sometimes you need to offer a kid, right. Where, you know, it's for them to notice. And, and I think with Wisconsin too, it's like half the battle I feel is getting these kids to Madison, right. The, sure. the, either a stereotype of Wisconsin or just what you know, the Midwest is, you know, they don't realize what Madison could be. And obviously you and I both live in this city. I've been here since I graduated from UW. So, you know, taking advantage of, you know, we know about the terrace, you know, about the downtown campus area, other things, and you're only what X amount, you know, hour and a half away from Milwaukee, most two, two and a half hours from Chicago, you're close enough to Minneapolis to make it a day trip or two for a weekend. So, you know, it's also, you know, there's a lot that Madison offers that, but you get them on campus, you can show them that. Uh, and so <laughs> that's going to, you know, so, you know, sometimes it's also interesting where, you know, you have to give out an offer to, you know, and that's, I think it's just in the college football world in general, it's not just Wisconsin, but you kind of say, Oh, this, you know, they're interested. Um, but with Wisconsin too, I mean, they do their diligence and, and they say, you know, they look, you know, talk about smart, tough, dependable. I heard that a couple of times yesterday yep. uh, and whatnot. Uh, I know Elvis Wood had said it um, for that, I think for Tommy McIntosh and, and whatnot. So again, it's a, you know, it, it will be interesting to see just what, what happens going forward. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with, with Hinsman. And obviously if anything breaks, make sure to go to badgerblitz.com and, you know, we'll John McNamara, uh, and I and Benjamin Wargo, we're all on. I mean, I realize that we like combined, like we all have like nearly 40 years of experience co covering Wisconsin athletics, which is just I'm like, I'm getting old, man. Like, <laughs> so, but anyways, but now it's been, um, it, it's, it's 
truly interesting to watch these journeys and, you know, talking to these kids when they're freshmen or sophomores, you know, getting the attention, especially the in-state kids. And, you know, Wisconsin can identifies talent, I think, extremely well, not just within the state, but outside of it and, and has good relationships and, and they can, you know, but you see that these kids with their journeys to, you know, to the signing day and, uh, you know, hen has been, you know, it's been one that's been interesting to watch and uh, we'll see what happens going forward. For sure. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up here, but Jake, thank you guys. Or thank you so much for your time. Good, sir. Make sure you guys follow Jake at Jake Coco, uh, K-O-C-O on Coco at the end there on Twitter. And then make sure you check out badgerblitz.com like he was talking about as well. Uh, Jake, thanks so much for jumping on the show and your expertise here. Uh, one, I will, I don't admit weakness a lot in my work, but I will say I am not the greatest recruiting cover, cover her, <laughs> not the greatest at recruiting coverage, but, uh, I appreciate you jumping on, lending some perspective here, man. Hey, man, I appreciate you so much. Uh, as always, you know, being on the beat with you and uh, and others on the you know, and whatnot. Y'all be well. You know, have a great holiday season, and uh, thanks again for having me on. All right. Well, we will be back next week talking about Arizona State in a bowl game and maybe some uh, big time recruits that might sign in the next 12, 36 hours from the time that we've recorded this. So <laughs> we will see on that. But thank you guys very much for listening.